the story of Savitri is recited in the Mahabharata as a story of conjugal love conquering death. Sri Aurobindo, the seer Varun, transforms this legend into a symbol to indicate the record of his own yoga. Savitri, the divine incarnation, chose Satyavan as her life mate who is destined as predicted by Narad to die in one year. On the appointed day, Savitri, with all her spiritual strength, confronts Yama, the god of death, who, unable to bear her force, gives back the life of Satyava. The author, Sri Aurobindo, before closing the composition, introduced an additional chapter called The Book of Everlasting Day. Savitri, on winning back the life of Satyavan, is lured to stay in that elevated heavenly ambience by her inner divine voice. Here it is pertinent to quote the Vedic seers. The being who worships only ignorance enters great darkness. The being who worships knowledge alone enters to a still greater darkness. This means that he who attains knowledge alone is enamored by that heavenly atmosphere, forgetting the world as it is with its pain, obscurity, sorrow and occasional happiness. This means entering into the greater darkness. Here, Savitri confronts a similar situation when she is called by the heavenly realms with its everlasting day and immortality. There is no night and death. They can live where the Apsara goddesses roam freely with their golden limbs. But Savitri refuses this view and answers that their mission is on earth not in heaven. Consequently, Savitri along with Satyavan return to earth. Here, the author Sri Aurobindo reveals his vision of the future man that he conceived and envisaged. This passage is one of the high points in the composition of Savitri, wherein Sri Aurobindo, the author, reveals his poetic excellence, noted for its sheer flow of narration with immaculate rhythmic notes and harmonic modes of excellence, as well as the basic spiritual truth. How shall we crown Sri Aurobindo? Is he greater a yogi than as a philosopher? Does the literary critic in him out of the sociological thinker? Does he shine brighter as a politician or as a poet? It is difficult to decide. Everywhere, 
Mount Everest seems to face Mount Everest. But when we study the Himalayas of various extremes of height, the first eminence that strikes us is Sri Aurobindo, the poet. Even in his teens, the muse had touched his lips and drawn from them the perfect note at once exquisite and grand, Amal Kiran. Now, the quotation from the mother, how she has appreciated Savitri. Each verse of Savitri is like a revealed mantra which surpasses all that man possesses by way of knowledge and is arranged in such a way that the sonority of the rhythm leads you to the origin of sound which is Om. It is the most beautiful thing he has left for man, the highest possible. The mother. <laughs>